Uh, thank you so much, uh, Comrade uh, Patriot. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Does not to be addressed as a Comrade Patriot. Sorry, oh. sorry. Uh, for guiding us. Um, thank you so much, Comrade Arnold Sululu. It's my first time to hear about the e-movement. Uh, thank you so much, Comrade Trust in Love. I'm sure you will deal with the issue of records uh, when you come back again. I thought you were going to address it. Um, thanks, Comrade Dingilizo Mbondo. Uh, I thought you were going to uh, talk about back to back six, what it means. Uh, uh, but you then spoke of triple C, uh, the three C's, not triple C. <laughs> uh, comrades, we are in the making of a conflict in Palestine. We stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. In this part of the world, we sometimes think that uh, the modern state of Israel is the biblical Israel. When we give solidarity to the people of Palestine, biblical verses are thrown at us, which say, pray for peace in Jerusalem. In church, those who go to church sing songs about the new Jerusalem. Some then mistaken the Jerusalem that, that we have there as the new Jerusalem. Hence, they then quote the Bible and say there must be peace, pray for peace in palace, uh, in, in New Jerusalem. The Jews, the Jews that occupy the land of Palestine, if you look into the map, they arrived in 1948 in that land. They've been occupying, they've taken, literally taken over <coughs> the land of the people of Palestine. It's an apartheid state, worse than the apartheid state that we had in this country. So we call on all revolutionary comrades to give solidarity to the people of Palestine. We do not stand with Israel. We oppose what President Joe Biden said when he says they will be standing with Israel. We stand with the victims. These are the people of Palestine. In 1993, President Bill Clinton facilitated the signing of the Oslo Agreement, which spoke of a two-state solution, which then we supported, so that the people of Palestine and people of Israel would live in peace alongside each other as neighbors. But Israel has been violating every peace accord, every agreement in the peace accord. They have used the peace accord agreement to continuously uh, take more land from the people of Palestine. This is why today we support the dismantlement of the Israel state. We want people of Palestine to live in peace. So comrades, we call on you to give solidarity to the people of Palestine. They are victims of Zionism. And they are Christians in Palestine. They are Christians and the Muslims in Palestine. So it is not necessarily a religious war that is happening. It's not a war among us, the Christians and the Muslims. So we, we stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Well, uh, Patriot Mko uh, today is, uh, we are learning. We, we are learning from comrades. Uh, Comrade Trust speaks of social change as their ideology is very interesting. We hope that at some point, uh, not today because there's no time, we will continue to engage, to unpack what they mean by social change uh, so, so that we understand where they stand as a triple C. Uh, he speaks about the transitional authority. Uh, we've already spoken about this in other platforms, that is the Zimbabwe Communist Party. We do not support the transitional authority as packaged by Professor Ipo Mandaza when he was making a presentation at, at uh, uh, 
uh, the Oara Tambo uh, Political School. Uh, we, we are learning also about the human rightism as an ideology for Zapo. Uh, it's quite interesting. We will continue to engage with comrades in Zapo, in Zapo to also understand uh, uh, about this human humanitism uh, as, 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 as an ideology, what it means. The Zimbabwe Communist Party or a Marxist Leninist Party was scientific socialist. In Zimbabwe, we want to build a social economy, socialist economy. We have said in our programs, in, in our literature, that uh, <coughs> socialism is not like a remote where you simply press and transit to socialism. We must build a national democratic economy for us to transit to a socialist economy. The Ipo Mandaza theory of a, a transitional authority, which is, is Triple C, uh, is buying into it. Uh, it seeks to accommodate the bourgeoisie who are not in government. It's an elitist approach. It does not give power to the working class and the peasants. So th this is why we are, we are opposed to this transitional authority. Hence, we are saying we must build a national democratic economy. How do we build this national democratic economy? First and foremost, because the national democratic economy itself, it is a transitional phase. It is a transitional phase to a socialist economy. We must dialogue among us ourselves as the people of Zimbabwe. Political parties that are represented in the Parliament of Zimbabwe, trade union movement, progressive civil society organizations, business, agriculture, because the national democratic economy on its own is not a socialist economic policy. We need to clarify this. We recognize that uh, for us to rebuild the Zimbabwean economy, we have to work with the capital. We need to get our industries back. We need to organize production on our farms or in our farms. We need to work with the traditional leadership uh, to develop our economy in rural communities. We need to develop a national economic plan. And uh, this national economic plan must be developed from village level and it gets adopted at the national level. As the party, the Zimbabwe Communist Party, were guided by what we call democratic centralism. So we, we do not believe in the top-down approach. This is why it's important that villagers, people in cities, they engage in the development of economic plan because our resources are different or the local economy, political economy in our villages is different. If you are in Kezi, you know Amatrimbi. Uh, if you are in Gokwe, you know Ikoton, uh, Uchind. Uh, so it is different. So we must recognize Oguti Mzimwan, where I come from, is a place that people call the Kon. How do we ensure that the people in Mzimwan and the neighboring areas and the nation at large benefit from the resources, from the gold that, that uh, uh, a corner uh, in our district. How do we benefit together with the people of Manikaland from uh, the forest that, that they have uh, in, in, the, in that part, part of the country? So this is why we are saying for us to build a national democratic economy, we must reject building an economy that is influenced by imperialist forces. We do not believe that uh, foreign direct investment is the answer in, in rebuilding the Zimbabwean economy. In 1991, we adopted neoliberal policies, economic structure adjustment program. And uh, this is the basis that uh, 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 led to the formation of the Movement for Democratic Change in 1999, which of course was hijacked. Uh, the working class came together, they formed the Movement for Democratic Change. It was hijacked. Just like the working class came together, formed the ZAP as, as, a, as a liberation movement. It was hijacked by other, other forces. We, we, we were spoken in detail about the split in 1963. Uh, when, uh, and the com comrade uh, 
Mpondo uh, uh, articulates it well and they present Zapu as a victim of imperialist forces because the split in 1963 was not based on the question of ethnicity. It was based on ensuring or trying to curtail the influence of the Soviet Union, Cuba and others to spread in this, in this part of the world. Hence, you had then to uh, split the liberation movement, the Zapu and the Kriatizan, which was created as a puppet of the imperialist forces. Uh, so uh, that's how Zapu then was hijacked because uh, Zapu had, uh, uh, it was during Cold War. So the MTC equally gets hijacked, particularly during the chaotic land reform program in 2000, taken over by other forces. And the Triple C today, as it stands, uh, it has been run by the NASU and the student leaders. Uh, the working class, uh, they have no role in Triple C. This is why you have a Triple C today. I know Comrade Trust will not agree, but uh, this is a, a <laughs> what, what, what we call constructive criticism. Yeah, it has abandoned the structures of the working class. It has been driven by, stu by students, to student leaders, who come up with the funny concepts. Hence, ZANU-PF has been able to turn Triple C to what it is today. The recalls, which I'm saying Comrade Trust did not speak to, because you cannot have someone if it's a well-organized political formation, you cannot have someone who wakes up in the morning and says, I'm the Secretary General, I'm writing to the Speaker of Parliament, I'm recalling everyone. It cannot be. But because uh, you, you have abandoned the organizational principles of a, of a movement that is up against the system, and, and then you think you are going to survive under that environment. And then instead, instead of to self-introspect on where you went, went wrong, you then begin to say, no, let's dis de -engage, disengage from parliament until this is resolved. You are taking your internal problems to ZANU-PF, and they give ZANU-PF credit. The soldiers, we saw the video that, that the, some American journalists uh, took when he was buying some soldiers uh, beer, Russian beer, they were saying to him, we're well, earning 140 US dollars, just like any other civil <coughs> servants. The soldiers, the CIO, uh, people in the security sector, they are suffering just like all of us. The only people that are looting, the looting class, the elite, which is a few individuals, are the ones that are controlling the economy. So when, when we then have a mass movement, that has that, that, uh, abandoned all organizational principles where you then create cultism. And uh, this cultism began, uh, <laughs> but Umpo uh, says always to me, no, you see, Comrade Maven, uh, there's this thing in Zimbabwe, which is now a tradition, where people worship a leader, it differs. That's the slogan, ED. And you are presenting ED, Ugoti, without ED, there's no ZANU PF. ED. There is no ideological meaning, there's nothing. It's an empty slogan which seeks to elevate an individual above an organization. Teachers for ED, nurses for ED, pastors for ED. That's a ZANU, ZANUism slogan. Then you repeat it in the opposition. And they raise him above the movement. I was saying <laughs> in March 20, 2022, when I recorded a video which I started circulating today, I said, yes, it is true that every liberation, every mass movement is a poster boy who's the figurehead of, of, of that movement. But that does not mean you must worship and elevate the person to cultism. And Comrade Vavi was correct when he said a dictator is not born. No one is born a dictator. You hit a, is, a dictator will not be hitting a much a major drums who time now coming since a prosembu are No. It is us, those that are closer to the lead, that 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 create a dictatorship. 
Now, the, the third point that, that, that I want to talk to <coughs> is the whole question of election. Because for us to, to talk about the stolen election in, 20, in 2023, the previous elections and so forth, we must first and foremost understand the class character of the Zimbabwean state. Zimbabwe is a deep milita militaristic state. The question that, that we are confronted with is, can you dismantle a deep state through an election? Uh, I, I've been uh, 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 talking to comrades, trying to understand, can you dismantle a deep state? We could not dismantle the colonial state in Rhodesia. Notwithstanding the military might that we had, Zebra and the Zan, but we could not. We were forced to negotiate in Lancaster House. We could not dismantle a deep state. In 1908, we were to enter into a compromise, which the elections with the com comrade has already spoken, that were supervised by Lord Soames. South Africa went through negotiations, Cortez. Notwithstanding Umkonto says, everyone supported Umkonto says, Apla, you could not dismantle militarily the apartheid state. <coughs> this then, this is why then uh, Kwame Krumah then characterizes correctly. Because if you study the whole of Africa, if you look into Guinea, when, when Fr France was, was uh, 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 in the 1950s, uh, saying those colonies should accept either to be part of the French colony or gain independence. It was Guinea which said no. Comrade Torres said no. What did they do, the French, when they left? They to break everything, uproot everything, pouring concrete even in the toilets. Because they wanted to force their colonies to accept what was known as the French community. This is why even today, some countries in West Africa are still paying colonial tax to France. This is, the, uh, in the, if you understand the military coups that are happening in West Africa today, it is in rejection of French imperialism in that, in that part of the world, which is now being taken over by, by the junior soldiers. So I'm saying Kwame Krum characterized the new independent states as a neo-colonial state. In other words, you can have your black president, black prime minister, your black cabinet, your flag, sing your national anthem, but you're not in control of your own economy. The Zimbabwe has moved from being a neo-colonial state. Zimbabwe is different from South Africa. The comrade talks about us marching to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, uh, marching to the judiciary. He has identified the key state apparatus in Zimbabwe that, that, that are part of this deep state. So the question therefore remains that uh, how then do you dismantle a deep state? Can you do so through an election? And it has been proven that it cannot happen to dismantle a deep state through an election. So given that, what is to be done to resolve the Zimbabwean crisis? First and foremost, we must build a mass grassroots movement. That's what we need. Because Triple C is not capable is not capable to lead in terms of dismantling the deep state in Zimbabwe. Organizationally, it is poor, it is weak, it has no structures, it's structureless. Uh, they are organ their structures are in secret, and when they say uh, they, they, they have structures because it's Yongena Nyovane, is Anpefs Bangele Nyovane, it is recalling their members of parliament. <laughs> David Coltart comes up with a brilliant idea of cleaning the city of Bulawayo mobilizing everyone to clean the city of Kulawa, and the people are participating in the cleaning. Then the next thing that you hear which let's disengage. Does that mean those beautiful programs then must be suspended? So we must build a mass grassroots 
movement in Zimbabwe. A movement that is rooted in the mass of our people. A movement that is clearly defined, understands how to run a, an organization. We must build a class conscious citizen in Zimbabwe. Because the biggest challenge that we have currently is that we are in the informal economy. Today, when the Zimbabwe Congress calls a strike, no one joins. It's unlike in 1998 when industries were operating. Why will people not join? Because we are Kotam. And we are saying I should go on strike. We are not in industries. In, in, in 2015, the International Labour Organization, through Resolution 204, resolved that uh, informal sector organizations must be accepted to join trade unions. Because we know that in Zimbabwe, when the Economic Structure Adjustment Program was introduced, people began losing their jobs. The Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions then had to assist retrench the workers to say for you to survive get into the informal sector so in 2015 then the international labor organization recognizes this reality that you have more workers that have been retrenched that now have gone into the formal economy so assist them in becoming part of the trade union movement our trade unions are weak so this is why we need to build a class conscious citizen. Because when we talk of building a class conscious citizen, it means we must build a class conscious workers and a peasant. You have today some who go around in the name of labor consultants. They will, they will get some workers Form, uh, form them, uh, organize them into a union. They will go to an another sector, organize them into a union, another sector, organize them into a union for simple getting a pay. That, that's, that's what is currently happening in Zimbabwe. So our trade unions are weak. So we need to build capacity. First and foremost, we must organize them. But how do you organize trade unions when you have no industries? This is why we are now talking of this transitional phase of building a national democratic economy. Because when you build a national democratic economy, you will get your young people into the factories. Once you get your young people into the factories, it is then that you raise their class consciousness at the workplace, intensify political education, organize them into trade unions. <coughs> Once you have functioning industries in Zimbabwe, it is then that the working class or the workers can then assist it to transit. As I conclude, because the comrades always think that when we talk of uh, socialism, they, they always think that and uh, call <laughs> term now kuma sound nice sounding things. <laughs> uh, 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 some country in South America, the Socialist Party came to power. <clears throat> when, when it came to power, gave Abandon Kom, because it was always socialism. Abandon Kom, Abandon Kom, Abandon. What did people do? They slaughtered Kom, Basil. Zazas are pale Kom, Abandon Basil in Kom, twice socialism. Just like the chaotic land reform. Learn reform because now we did not go to war for universal suffrage. We did not go to war, as I always hear what Triple C and others would say. We went for us to have the right to vote. That's not the reason why I went to war. Right? We went to war so that we regain our land, we regain our dignity as the big black people. We then used the issue of voting or universal suffrage as a key strategy tactic. Because we then said, if all of us then vote as Zimbabweans, 
including Amakiwa, everyone else, then we'll have the majority ourselves as the black people. So it was a political tactic. But this is not what we, what we went to war for. So the land reform <coughs> program was necessary. It needed to happen. But because we did not raise the class consciousness of the people, and the organization or the party that was driving land reform program, <coughs> it's a party that has no understanding of the scientific socialism. It began to say, allowing a nandi tatas or jambanja, tatani land, tatani land, what can you slash our changing com when you are young kind? And now we have no protection in Zimbabwe. So, as I'm concluding, we need to build a class conscious citizenry. We need to win over key state apparatus in Zimbabwe. Who are these key state apparatus? We need to win over the military. Uh, uh, this thing <laughs> from the opposition that says uh, we are going to go to the ballot, uh, the deep state is going to announce you as a winner, you walk into a state house, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's a reality that, that you must accept. Because the state is an organ of class rule. <clears throat> It represents the interests of the class that it represents. What you can only have is a change of government. You have one government, just like you always have in America. One day you have the Democrats, they are in power. The other day you have the Republicans, they are in power. But the deep state in America remains, which is in charge of the American state. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels says, the executive, which is cabinet, they are just the but man economic managers of the bosses. Cabinet is just like who can take away flat and I don't even know the owner of that building, man. Where they say you rob, you golf every month. You are twenty-five to a million, but I don't know the owner of the building. So governments in this part of the world. They are just like a market takers. So uh, let, let me thank all of you. As uh, a executive director of the African Diaspora Forum, that uh, your input assists us as the African Diaspora Forum uh, as we work with the migrants communities because our interest as the African Diaspora Forum is to understand why people are leaving their countries to come to South Africa, uh, which earlier on I said then create problems uh, in communities who are going to an election. The issue of migration is key uh, in the 2024 elections. Last time we had a discussion uh, around Sudan and today Zimbabwe and the African Diaspora Forum will continue to engage with other communities to understand what are the push factors, what can be done to, to resolve these issues because uh, what you are presenting, these are some of the things that uh, we take to our partners, we, we take to governments to say, why don't we resolve this crisis? Because in the case of the Sadak region, we need to industrialize the Sadak region. A South African should go and uh, live in Lilongwe, I7 Zakon. Migration must not be one way down to South Africa. Uh, people must uh, migrate across, not because so that we can build a peaceful Sadak. But for us to build a peaceful Sadak, it means we, would, we must industrialize our, our, our region. But for us to industrialize our, our region, we must resolve our economic crisis. Thank you, comrades.